country, and I find it to be quite the special place. And I had a chance to go to Iceland earlier this year. It wasn't a secret of any kind, and we were working together on a fun project there, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But the important thing is that WikiLeaks there has a special place in people's hearts because we released loan books that showed how people had bankrupted a nation state, how they had essentially done a ton of unethical things, and everybody knows who they are now. Everybody knows what happened. And this is extremely important for a country that has just over 300,000 people. That is a village by comparison. It might even be Greenwich Village by comparison. This document is extremely important. The impact that this had on Icelandic society was not small. People understood what happened. They understood that they were robbed blind. So how has the truth helped? How has that changed things? Well, I think that's quite clear for the people of Iceland and probably for you. So let's talk about Guantanamo Bay. You guys probably want to see that closed, I suppose? Yeah? yeah. Well, let's talk about how we're going to close it. We're going to close it by knowing all what's going on there, right? Lots of people tried to get the operations manual from Guantanamo Bay, and they quite simply couldn't get it through the Freedom of Information Act. It's just not possible in some cases to get information. After the document was leaked to us, it was leaked a number of times to us over some period of time, which shows that every time the US military told us about how things were going and what the procedures were, they were fucking lying to us. This is really important because you see, this manual was not written for us. It was written for people that do these things. And that's the really important point here, right? When you have an internal document, you have a view into the mindset of the organization that actually takes these actions. This is critical, because when someone crafts a piece of PR for you, it's for you. It's to affect some change. It's to manipulate you to do a thing, right? So when you read this document, when you see how the Guantanamo Bay Operations Manual is laid out, and you see the operating procedure, you know that it is not something you want to support. You understand quite clearly. And the fact that multiple times this document was leaked lets you know that when they said they made changes in response to media inquiries, you know that they were also lying. And you know now when they move their lips that they're probably lying again. So how does that change your view of that? I suppose you probably still want it to be closed down, but you have some facts on your side here to show that not all the players in the game are doing the right thing and they're not all on their side. So replace them. Germany has a little bit of a fetish with the military, let's say. And this is extremely important because Germany's military is not supposed to be going on excursions. It's not supposed to be um, having combat. People in Germany are not supportive of this. Um, and the other deutsche Leute here in diesem Vortrag, was denkst du? Nein? Yeah, okay, ich hatte gedacht so. All right, so, thanks for the one German. It's great, fantastic. Um, this is important because this, this brings change about, right? This shows that the politicians that are involved here in Germany probably are aware of these types of things. And it doesn't really matter if they're aware or not in some regards, because what actually matters here is that you know what's actually going on. You've got an idea what Chancellor Merkel knows about. Just a piece, probably, but this piece lets you know that maybe things are not going the way that you want them to. WikiLeaks is pretty well known in the United States for some of the things that have happened recently. And while I think that that's fantastic, it's really important to note this particular leak talked about around 1,700 um, assassinations, essentially. And this, this, this document leak caused quite a stir in Kenya. It really it tossed the election in 2007, and it caused the United Nations to do an investigation. In fact, several people working with WikiLeaks were assassinated. They were murdered for the work that they were doing. They weren't sources, they were journalists that were working to take this information, and there are photos of them brutally shot to death in their car. 
right? So you want to talk about change. When you expose 1,700 people dying, there's a chance that you're going you're gonna to go too. It's very unfortunate that that happened, but their sacrifice has made quite a difference in Kenya. And this is something that I think we can all learn from, which is that we have to make sacrifices in order to change the world. We have to make sacrifices that potentially will cost us our lives. I never expect to work in the computer security industry again, but that's okay. I think this is far more important than anything like that. And some of you will not make this choice, and that is okay. And some of you will pretend to not make this choice, and you will go in deep, and thank you for that. We don't like to back down from a fight, and this is a great example where some people tried to pull our domains, and it didn't work out for them. They did manage to get some prior restraint pulled, but they lost in the end. And the reason they lost is because it was quite clear that not only the information was out there, we were in the right legally, especially in the United States, and we had a San Francisco court, which didn't hurt. <laughs> you laugh, but there's something to look up to about that court. Every court should be like that court. The First Amendment is extremely clear. This one, I think, is probably the topic you all want to hear about. And we are going to talk about it in a moment, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner. I want to be very clear about this video. There were two versions released, a completely unedited version of the video, and a video that has some commentary. It has some subtitles for people that are hearing impaired, and from people that are not able in any way to be able to, well, watch the video as it was intended to be watched. Don't take this as editorial commentary that is flippant. We chose the name because it was important. We chose the name because that is the language of the people that are committing these crimes. And the sad thing about this video is that the main reason that any of you know about it and the only reason that anybody really cares about it is because some journalists died. And that's not to knock journalists because they're definitely one of my favorite professions. But it's quite clear to me that this is the type of thing that occurs every day in Iraq. In 2005, I hitchhiked into Iraq, let's say as a tourist, to visit some friends. And when I was there, some of you know this story, I visited some friends that lived in northern Iraq and Kurdistan in Arbil and al salamaniya and some of the other areas on the border of Iran after exiting through Turkey. The people that I met there, Arabs from Baghdad especially, were horrified. Can you imagine meeting a man, a grown man, who has tears in his eyes when he explains that every day that he leaves his house, he kisses his wife goodbye and hopes that he will see her again because he knows that if he takes the wrong turn on a street, that he gets killed. And his wife never even gets to see the body. We are responsible for this. So this video shows an example of that. It shows people trying to do the right thing. I ask you, if someone invaded your country and you saw one of your fellow men or women shot down, or other, frankly, if you saw them shot down in the street would you stop your car and would you help them? If you saw someone that was brutally murdered and hurt in some way, I think I would. I'd stop my car. Because you see, this didn't happen in the middle of nowhere. This happened in the middle of a, one of the largest cities in this country where many, many, many people live. In a neighborhood where normal working class people live. Just think about that. You walk out of your house, you see someone who has been shot on the street, you try to help them. Do you help them directly? Do you maybe call for an ambulance? Such privilege you have to have a telephone that can call a hospital. You help them directly because you don't have a choice. But this is an example of where a journalist had this video, and that journalist wrote about it in his book that he sells for a profit, and he did not leak the video. What do you think of that? Do you think that's okay? Yeah, it's fucking bullshit, that's right. 
It's absolutely terrible. And you know, what's even worse is that we support these programs that create that kind of collaboration between the people that are supposed to tell the truth and the ones